let's, let's do Virginia first. Let's do Virginia. All right. So go. So let's throw up Virginia here. So uh, Virginia Democrats kept control of the Senate, and put, you can put up the next one here. They also they also flipped the House of Delegates. It's an absolute route for Republicans yeah, so. who put all of their hopes in Glenn Youngkin fundraising for two years, bringing in some big money to Virginia and saying we are going to. And we're we're going to get a trifecta. We're going to make me a presidential candidate. Uh, we're going to restrict abortion rights, and it, that's where the record stopped. It's like, wait a minute, you're going to do what in Virginia? <laughs> right. And it's how much of it was just Virginia is a more democratic state than it is a Republican state, and how much of it do you think came down to the question of abortion rights? And then we're going to get to Susanna Gibson as the this key race. This is the the cam, cam lady uh, who might win. We'll see. Yeah. It's going to be very close. Uh, right. So, you know, I think, yes, of course, abortion became a big part of this. And Glenn Youngkin was using part of a strategy that uh, the you know, anti-abortion movement and, and pro-life people, I, including myself, by the way, think is is better, which is being sort of using, to, to paraphrase Ronald Reagan, bold colors, not pale pastels. They'll be wishy-washy on it because then uh, you're you're allowing Democrats to define you on the issue, to make voters see you as dishonest. You know, if your position is less popular and you're honest about it, you'll probably get rewarded more so than if your position is unpopular and you look to everybody like you're lying about it. Um, and it did not work out well for Glenn Youngkin. Um, and I think what that speaks to is just the depth of the unpopularity of the issue. So he goes on offense. He tries to say, uh, in, in perhaps the best state to do this, where you had your moderate Democrat governor, Ralph Northam, absolutely trashed in the state, unpopular in the state, for his uh, late-term abortion policies and comments just a couple of years ago. So if there was anywhere that's sort of fertile ground for Republicans to do this message, it would have been Virginia, and it did not go well for Glenn Youngkin. And again, yeah. I just think that speaks to the depth of the unpopularity that the country, especially post-Roe, is in a completely different place on abortion than people like me and than Republicans. And I think they mislearned the Ralph Northam uh, lesson because as m if for people who uh, forget, he, he, made some, he made some weird comments about, uh, the, the comments that he retracted about uh, babies like right after Being birth or something. Being kept comfortable and then, yeah. And there was a uh, state legislator who had, um, who had like floated legislation that would allow like yes. abortion like right up until birth or like yes. even after it or something like that. Yes. And so the right really seized on this and it became a national story on the in the in conservative media. But then in the in the next legislative elections Democrats did just fine. Like they they held they held their own because they and because they were like oh no we can't do this like they totally scrapped it um, mm -hmm. instead of standing by it and uh, I mean that's a, a lesson for Republicans I guess yeah, and in some, some of it was too. just Northam being like look I misspoke that's not what I that's not what I meant and I think some on the right were like no you didn't misspeak that's really really is your agenda but I think most Dem like almost all Democrats are like no 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 that's we we're gonna believe he misspoke because that's not actually what our position is on this issue. And then in, in, the, in those key races where that was the focal point, Democrats won. Mm -hmm. And so, but there was so much energy that I think Republicans, and particularly the pro-life crowd, were like, well, we can go back in and we can do this, yeah. especially after Youngkin. Um, but they couldn't. So, but so Susanna Gibson, that's, this is House District 57, if you guys want to you know, follow the votes as they come in. Currently, uh, d Democrats have the House of Delegates no matter what. Um, I think it's you know they, by at least by at least a vote. Yeah. Uh, if uh, there are two uncalled races by the Associated Press, and one of them is Susanna Gibson, she's currently uh, trailing her opponent uh, Owens by roughly two percentage points. This is uh, the candidate who is a nurse who was uh, busted by Republican operatives and the Washington Post as doing as as like. Doing sex with her husband online. <laughs> doing sex. Doing sex. <laughs> uh, right on this website, Chatterbait, yeah. uh, which the Washington Post incorrectly uh, accused her of violating its terms of service. Oh. <laughs> it was <laughs> hilarious. Like the six paragraphs of the Washington Post, you know, it's the first six paragraphs of the Washington Post article are about, all about how she violated the terms of service That's the by, <laughs> by accepting tips. It's such a hilarious way to approach the issue because liberals, you know, they're fine with 
uh, you know, consenting adults doing mm-hmm. everything and uh, doing anything that, that they want as long within as within the boundaries of marriage. Within the boundaries of marriage, and as long as nobody's getting hurt. But wait, you violated the terms of service right. of this website. So we looked into it. Turns out, no, they didn't actually. The, they, the Post and the Republican operative just misunderstood the terms <laughs> of service. They just didn't look closely enough. They, just didn't. <laughs> they only read like a snippet and not the rest of it. So anyway, uh, Virginia voters, uh, you know, stood up for people who were falsely accused of violating terms of service. Mm, that's important. Um, you read state, all the fine print. Yeah, statewide Democrats abandoned this race. Like they they tossed her aside. She probably could have won. She absolutely would have won. <laughs> the margin uh, right they, now is really close. If if and she might still win, but had Democrats not abandoned her, both their their little super PAC that they've got out there plus the kind of state leaders, then she wins. Because she's only if she loses, it'll be by triple digit votes. It was yeah, as we're talking, it was called at fifty one to forty eight. Um, so, so by some places, right? Uh, but not, not by the AP. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, not everyone's called. So there's the, still a lot of absentee and kind of mail ballots still to be counted. Yeah, and you know what, Ryan, I think another important thing to mention out of Virginia is that Ad Impact Politics, uh, their study of TV ads, 40% of all of those ads in Virginia state ledge and general elections were about abortion. Uh, And again, similar to other states we've talked about, Kentucky, uh, Ohio, Democratic advertisers outspent Republicans by $7.7 million. And Virginia, interestingly enough, I mean, it's shocking how expensive these races were. The Senate candidates raised $94 million. The House of Delegates candidates collected $80 million. This is according to Open Secrets. That is a record because in Virginia, uh, there actually are no limits on the amount of money that- And corporations can give. It's the loosest laws in the country. It's it's absolutely insane. And that's where total fundraising by state legislative candidates, according to Open Secrets, has increased fourfold over the last 20 years. It's gone from $44.2 million in 2003 when adjusted for inflation. You look at those numbers, that is gargantuan yeah. and honestly a total waste of money. <laughs> yes. So culture war loss in Virginia. We go to New Jersey as well. Uh, again, you saw a situation where uh, Republicans in New Jersey were hoping that backlash to trans policies in, in school districts which, which were driving a lot of uh, parents to school board meetings, uh, produced a lot of uh, slates to run for school board, mm. uh, it would bleed into the state legislative uh, races. Uh, but as so far, what it looks like is that Democrats actually expanded their majorities uh, in, in the state legislature in New Jersey. And by the way, there was Democrats also won some key school board elections in Virginia mm-hmm. um, that were fought along these very narrow culture war arguments. And so you're, what is going on? Why do you think um, the kind of Rufo, Chris Rufo approach here is, is getting routed? I mean, I think it always depends on the candidate. There were some weird Republican upsets to uh, a candidate in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. This is a strange one. Um, there's a candidate in the Bronx who, what happened a here? Republican woman um, in, the, <laughs> in the Bronx who like set, this is like history. Um, usually you, unopposed. Like usually these are like, that. You, there isn't even an opponent, a Republican mm, opponent on the ballot. Yeah, so Christy, Mar- it was a weird race too. Christy Marmorat- Marmorato, I guess I'm gonna have to learn how to say this name. It's like when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez yes. won. Was like, what? Figure that out. Uh, but yeah, so this is a 13th city council district. It was a really nasty race. Um, it covers a couple neighborhoods in the eastern part of the Bronx, that's the district. Uh, They haven't had, Republicans haven't had, uh, this is the New York Daily News, it refers to it as a Republican curse that swept the Bronx for nearly 20 years. They say she broke that, um, she had a 6% lead over the incumbent Democratic councilwoman, and they were going back and forth over public safety, land use, Um, it was just a kind of a weird race. and she was attacking the incumbent Dem for leaning too far left. There was also a weird Republican upset in New Hampshire. Uh, oh, Manchester. Right. The and mayor the, of Manchester. Yeah. yeah. And the Allegheny County DA, mm-hmm. uh, right in Dem, who ran as a Republican yeah. <laughs> um, on a sort of anti Soros prosecutor line, holds on there. So it, it was, you know, that's it's pretty typical that you have these sort of. Um, 
the, the sort of smattering in mm -hmm. an off-year election of, of what things actually are. Overall, the top line is it was a bad night for yeah. Republicans, of course. And, and actually on that note, um, we have results as well from Mississippi because that was one of the bright spots for Republicans. We can put those up. This is a- My eight, man, Tate Reeves. Literally your man. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, if you weren't watching last week, we debated whether or not Ryan actually looks like Tate Reeves because apparently people tell you you do. That is one good looking gentleman right there. I just want to <laughs> congratulate him on his, his triumph over Elvis Presley's second cousin there. Tate Reeves, yeah, so he wins 50, 50, about 52 to 47, so yeah, fairly close for a deep red Pres state like Yeah, Presley was hoping to keep him under 50, which would have forced a runoff. Presley's kind of a wannabe Bashir, right? Someone who's able to do the kind of populist Dem thing in a red state. Yes, and he's doing it in a, an even redder state. So, yeah. you know, sometimes just the objective conditions that you're faced with just make it impossible for even the best politician because he, his, his track record is pretty incredible. He was a popular mayor in a Republican area. This is Brandon Presley. Uh, and then he's been a multi-term member of the Public Commission Board in Mississippi representing a thoroughly Republican area. And he's a, he de defines himself as like an FDR style populist. Mm -hmm. uh, and to get that close with a Republican in Mississippi is pretty impressive. Although the state does seem to be increasingly trending blue. Like, are we going to see a play, a time when enough people, you know, a combination of uh, the Democratic population growth in the area plus people just moving there for cheaper cost of living? I mean, well, I think, and, and this up, is- Makes it blue. This is where I think state. Dems have, you know, the, to again, paraphrase the Reagan bold colors, not pale pastels thing. This is where I think Dems have uh, actually seen the writing on the wall when they, they see Bernie Sanders sweep in 2016, you know, win places like Wisconsin. Um, those populist left policies are incredibly popular with you know, those those kind of voters yeah. that, maybe the Obama-Trump person, um, or- And Presley's from Northern Mississippi, which is, you know, Appal has some Appalachian character, right? Right, and people incredibly correct me if I'm poor wrong, state. But. I mean, I just, the people there suffer a lot. And uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I think FDR style Democratic mm -hmm. policies as opposed to Biden style Democratic policies are uh, probably the way to go. Right, so let's talk about Pennsylvania real quick. Speaking of which, yeah. yeah. So a huge, huge victory for Democrats in the Supreme Court race. So they had a 5-2 majority on the Supreme Court, which is just incredibly crucial because that's the place where election challenges go. Mm -hmm. uh, this would have made it 4-3, but uh, the, the Democrat uh, won very comfortably against the Republican in a, in a race that saw a lot of money spent uh, on both sides. They also flipped the Superior Court, which is the, the court just right under the Supreme Court had been Republican controlled. Uh, now it's uh, Democratic controlled. And then out in, uh, talk about Philadelphia real quick. So Philadelphia has two council seats. DC has this too, uh, that are reserved for the non-majority party because mm -hmm. it's such a blue area that it, it would just be all Democrats if, if you didn't put in some rules so that everybody gets a trophy. Yeah. And for years, those have been held by Republicans. So there's yeah. like the two token Republicans on the city council. The Working Families Party uh, last election went after those two seats. One of them won one of them with Kendra Brooks. She won re-election and they also, WFP now sees the other one. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a city council that's Democrats and then Working Families mm. Party. Now over in Western Pennsylvania, uh, you had uh, two, two really critical races. One was the district attorney race that you talked about. So the six-time, six, you know, six-term prosecutor, kind of tough on crime prosecutor, was beaten in the primary by a kind of like you said, a criminal justice reformer. I don't know if he was Soros funded or not, but that type of, yeah. of challenger. He then switched, like the Buffalo uh, sheriff did, switched parties, did a write-in campaign to win the Republican nomination, won the Republican nomination, and then won the general election by like three, two points or something. So so he will be entering his seventh term now yeah. as continuing to be the tough on crime prosecutor. The real win that Republicans wanted was the, uh, the Allegheny County executive, which is more powerful than Pittsburgh mayor, budget of billions over, oversees the elections in Pittsburgh. And Sarah Inamorato mm -hmm. uh, was a Berniecrat and, uh, and had been elected to the state house in 2018, along with Summer Lee, with the support of DSA, mm -hmm. won the Democratic primary for this race. 
Republicans uh, nominated this guy, something Rocky, I forget his first name. Joe Rocky. Joe Rocky. Just just classic pro-business, moderate, backslapping, former banker. It's like a name you would make up for that character. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Um, Yass, big big funder, big Republican funder who spent a ton of money on the Supreme Court race, also spent a ton of money on, on Joe Rocky. And he tried to make the entire race about Hamas. Right. Uh, and obviously, it's an extra resonant issue in Pittsburgh. The, mm-hmm. the Tree of Life massacre um, has has made anti-Semitism there extraordinarily uh, resonant. And robust Jewish community. Robust Jewish community. Um, and and Inamorato had that association with DSA. Mm-hmm. So Rocky said, I dare you to denounce uh, Hamas. And she's like, oh, I, I denounce Hamas. <laughs> He's like, oh, I dare you to denounce DSA. She's like, I left DSA in 2019. I denounced DSA too. <laughs> Summer Lee left in 2018. Um, and, but it was still, he still kind of hammered away at Gaza as, as a key issue, which was, you know, didn't make any sense because Allegheny County executive doesn't. But her response didn't make much sense either. Her response was, this is actually about abortion. But the Allegheny County executive does not al- also have much say. Our politics are so stupid. <laughs> uh, what, re- what it's really about is taxes, affordable housing, walk, clean, clean air, clean water. Like that's what the Allegheny County executive um, actually does. But the vote was over abortion and, and Hamas. Those and so top was, line was, culture war yeah, issues. It was very. It's, it was much closer than you would typically have a Democrat, a, a generic Democrat on generic Republican Allegheny County race. She, you know, she's only going to win by looks like ten thousand votes or fewer. Yeah. But still, the, now you're going to have a a kind of Bernie Sanders type um, who, and she's pledging to make affordable housing and and clean air, and clean water and access to clean air and clean water, like her major priorities. Yeah, I mean, anybody running for a county executive race should uh, probably take heed. Those are good issues to talk about. Yeah, in your, whereas your Rocky said he was going to cut property taxes. Uh, yeah. yeah, so if you if we put A10 up, I think this is also, just as we kind of wrap this segment, this, this uh, review of everything that went down last night, uh, I just want to put the spending up for you to see Republicans were outspent in Kentucky. They were outspent in Virginia. They were outspent in Ohio. They did outspend uh, Dems in Mississippi by, by about a million dollars. They massively overspent uh, the Republicans in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court race. I mean, not even close. Jeff, you asked, he's a step up. Why Clearly. Why so cheap here? I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, this is like a, a real problem for Republicans, obviously, getting the donor base mobilized um, and energized, the, the sort of high dollar donor race. But yeah, I mean, I just think that's a, it, it's true that- it's 10 million, for people that don't see it, 10 million for Democrats on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to 6.5 million. But if you're Jeff Yes, why don't you just match the 10 million? Why not? Come just on. Just throw it in there, see what happens. Uh, because that really, I mean, in local races, I don't think it's necessarily true in presidential races. If you look at Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, I mean, it, it's not quite the same. But in local races, when you are blitzing the airwaves with uh, messaging that's either true or false, uh, when it comes to abortion, when it comes to women's rights, when it comes to crime, um, and, and it, when you're able to do that, uh, and, and you you can be louder than the other person. Uh, that does actually make a really big difference in some of these smaller down ballot races, um, and, and in more localized races too. So again, that isn't to say you know limiting abortion is wildly popular. Um, I think that you know people on the sort of pro life, anti abortion side like myself desperately need to realize that and reckon with it. Um, but they were also wildly outspent, and that could have made up some of these margins. There's just no question about it. So now Republicans need to take a long, hard look in the mirror. Uh, I already saw some comments from pundits on Twitter about whether too much money is going to, to Trump's legal battles, uh, whether you know too much money is, is being mismanaged by the RNC. Ronald Romney McDaniel has been the head of that for a very long time, and uh, you know she's had Trump, obviously, to contend with um, as an electoral benefit and disadvantage uh, in different places throughout her tenure, but these are really bad results for her. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.